paid a great price so that he might own us. He has the deed uh, to my life. And if you've trusted Christ as your Savior to your life, and hopefully uh, we are letting him use his property the way he wants to use it. Well, let's see. We have children's church in here. And how many rode the bus? You're in here. You rode the van this morning into church. Let me say thank you for being here this morning. There's a few of us, six or seven. Thank you for being here this morning. I'm glad that you're here with us. And so since we have children's church in here, let's see here. Um, Brother Harris, you've been in children's church before, right? Come on. You need to come down here uh, on this side here. And um, let's see. Brother Moffat, you've been in children's church before, right? You've been. All right. Come on up here. We're going to do a rousing rendition of hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Now, it's, we have children's in here, children's church, and we need a little something to warm us up. Can you think you can handle that? <laughs> all right, so you want to be the hallelujah first, or the hallelujah? Yes. Okay, all right, <laughs> hallelujah, and that leaves you with praise ye the Lord. How many have never sung this song before? Uh, okay, all right, there's one or two, all right, so here we go. Brother, Brother Moffat, I'll help you here. Ready? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad, uh, but uh, I think it can be much better. And so let's switch. <laughs> let's switch. And I think Brother Harris was trying to get you to stand. And was that what you were trying to do? Uh, just, <laughs> no, okay. All right. All right. So Brother Harris, you're going to start with how, uh, hallelujah. I'll get you started. Help you right at the beginning. Ready? Hallelujah. 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 you two can be seated. I think by far and away, Brother Moffitt, side one. And uh, wasn't really even that close. Uh, I could only... Oh, uh, man. I think actually some of the adults got into it more than the kids did. <laughs> In some cases. All right. Uh, I, I endeavor to be brief, and now I just took about five minutes of my time playing Hallelujah, <laughs> singing at Hallelujah Praise. But there's no snow out there, so uh, we're all right. First Timothy, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 4 in your Bibles. And how many read the bulletin this morning? Uh-oh. Have you read the bulletin? How many? All right. That's not going to work. I don't know what that, uh, I've got another pair on my desk. Will you grab those for me, please? Uh, that's the end of those readers there. So good thing that they're real good Walmart, you know, $5 specials that uh, maybe not even that much. 2 Timothy chapter 4, and either I'm going to try to read it squinting or kill time until he gets back my glasses. We'll try to read it. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 21. Do thy diligence to come before winter. Eubulus greeteth thee, and Pudens, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brethren. So, do thy diligence to come before winter. And so, here is the message, title of the message this morning. So, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, a, a, in children's church and you're listening today, here's the message. For the adults, it's this. Come before winter. For the kids, what to do on a snow day. What to do on a snow day. And, uh, and uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, I know this is a little bit different uh, than usual. And so I just pray you'd help us to honor and glorify you. Lord, we really do desire, I d- desire to please you and glorify you. And sometimes we do things a little differently and, and maybe just to uh, keep us on our toes a little bit. But... Um, we desire to be, I desire to be used by you. I pray that you'd use me this morning in this brief devotion, if you will. I pray you'd protect us as we go, and that there wouldn't be anyone in danger on the road. So we pray and we ask it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Now here we have Paul, an older, in fact, this is the last epistle that Paul wrote, of course, uh, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He wrote, uh, 2 Timothy was the last letter that Paul wrote before he was to die. In fact, even in this passage, we see 
uh, in this chapter, I'm sorry, we see uh, uh, early in the chapter uh, of 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, uh, um, verse number uh, 6, for I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. And so Timothy's at the end of his life. He's about ready to, to not far from death. And he's writing, I'm sorry, Paul is, and he's writing to the young uh, preacher Timothy. And he says, Timothy, come before winter. And you ever thought about why he wanted Timothy to come before winter? Why did Timothy want, or, I'm sorry, Paul want Timothy to come before uh, it started snowing? Some of you are saying, Pastor, please finish preaching before it starts snowing. Um, um, let's, let, let's get this over with so we can get outside or we can get in the, the cars and get home. And as soon as we pull into the driveway and walk in the door, then the flakes can fly and uh, we don't have to worry about driving in that slick stuff and, and so forth. And so uh, that's what you're thinking. Hey, let's get this done before the snow comes. Well, Paul, the Apostle Paul is literally saying, come before... The, the snow, come before the winter, not necessarily the snow, but come before the winter. Why? Well, if we look at verse number 13, the Bible says there, the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchments. Now, I, uh, after I read through this, I look, well, one of the reasons, or there's three reasons here that he wants them to come before winter because there's some things that he wants before the winter comes. What's the first thing he wants? Somebody at Children's Church, what's the first thing he wants? Verse number 13. Cloak. Yeah, a cloak. Thanks for raising your hand, Mike. I appreciate that. A cloak. He wants his, he wants his coat. Hey, winter is coming, and uh, I want my coat before winter comes. You better bring my coat. Bring my coat. And then he says, uh, do thy diligence to come before winter, because I want my coat. Now, I tried to study... Uh, this week, I spent some time trying to study. By, by the way, I had no intention to preach on this this morning, but uh, the Lord just worked on my heart. And I, I, instead of preaching the message, the other message that I had, I thought, well, I'll just kind of uh, talk about what I wrote as the article. I, I tried to study the best I could to find out what the temperature was in Italy, Rome, because that's where uh, Paul was, about 2,000 years ago. Not quite 2,000 years ago, but roughly 2,000 years ago. And uh, there's all kinds of little uh, things. That they Historically, they can say it was cold, and they could say that it was colder during this decade than it was. But there's no way really to know for sure what the winter was uh, in Rome during this time, especially the temperature. Uh, there's no way uh, to, to know that. They didn't record temperatures back then, and so there's no way really to know the temperature. So, And I do realize that that uh, uh, climate changes over periods of time. And so 2,000 years ago, it might have been much different than it is right now. But in Italy, in the winter, it doesn't get that cold. At least, it's not as cold as it is today. Uh, Brother Edwards, I think, said before the service that it was 16 below wind chill this morning. Um, I, I don't think it was that cold in Italy. Uh, now, I don't, again, I don't know what it was like 2,000 years ago, but today in Italy, uh, the, the winter may get down into the 30s. It's normally in the 50s, and at night it gets down into the 30s. Well, that's cold, but that's not uh, zero or one. Or this morning I woke up, I think it was negative two. Uh, real temperature, not wind chill, negative two. And so uh, it wasn't quite as cold there as it is here, at least uh, from our study, that there's no way that you can know for sure. But... We all know that temperature, and as far as feeling temperature, is all relative. Um, I didn't recognize the carpenters. Uh, the carpenters were here Wednesday night, Brother Carpenter and his wife and three children. I have moved to the St. Louis area, their daughter. Um, uh, I've forgotten her name. Talitha, I apologize. Talitha uh, has cystic fibrosis, and so uh, they needed to be close to Children's Hospital here in St. Louis. And so uh, they're, and they moved into Pacific recently. Pray for Brother Carpenter. He's a, he's a preacher, uh, and uh, um, he pastored for nine years in Texas, and he's looking for a church to pastor. And so be in prayer for Brother Carpenter. Uh, but it's good to have the Carpenters here this morning. And so we were talking, he grew up in southern Louisiana. And uh, we lived in southern Houston, southern Texas, south of Houston, south of I-10. Now, if you know anything about the, the highways, uh, if you're south of I-10, then you're south. I mean, all of, almost all of Florida is south of I-10. But other than that, uh, south of I-10, it's, it's warm. And so 
uh, we were talking to um, my wife's, one of my wife's sisters the other day, and we were talking about how cold it was here. And she said, yes, it's really cold here. She said, I have my heater in my car turned all the way up, and I'm wearing a sweater. <laughs> That's what she said. I have my, my heater turned up all the way, and I'm wearing a sweater today. It's cold. Now, I don't know. I didn't ask her what temperature it was. I just heard that and, and laughed because it's probably in the 40s, maybe in the 50s, maybe down in the 30s at night. But to them, that's cold. And so temperature can be relative. And so uh, probably for Paul, this was really cold. Winter's coming. And so he tells Timothy, hey, bring my cloak and make sure you come before winter. So what do you do on a snow day? Number one, stay warm. And that's pretty easy. Uh, Paul said, bring my coat, bring my cloak. And number one, stay warm. Number two, we look at uh, verse number 13, the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus. When thou comest, bring with thee and the books. Now, I'm not of the opinion here that the books are referred to the Word of God, the Bible, the, the law and the prophets. Uh, I, I think they're talking about other books. But number two, let me say this, study wisely. Study wisely. What happens often when there's a snow day? When you don't have work or you don't have school? Kids, listen up. Is often the, the, the idle mind is a, the, uh, the devil's workshop. And while we're trying to stay warm, what often happens is we get into the flesh. And we start doing other things that we shouldn't be doing. We have extra time, and so we watch things we shouldn't watch. We listen things we sh to things we shouldn't listen to. And so he's saying, hey, winter's coming. I want the books. Study wisely. Be very careful when you, get, uh, uh, you go on your phone. Uh, adults, children, even children these days have phones. And, uh, and adults often will get on and they'll follow this preacher. They'll watch this preacher and then... The next uh, uh, recommendation, whether it's whatever the, the social media is, uh, it leads you on to this preacher and this preacher and this preacher. And before long, you're way off into uh, uh, f false teaching. And, and you're watching, and then, uh, there's times, and I don't have it as, uh, as often as other preachers do, and I'm thankful for that. Maybe people don't say anything, but hopefully people are, are being wary in our church of, of false preachers. But uh, often, some preachers will say... Uh, 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 that uh, they have members and say, hey, pastor, have you ever heard so-and-so on YouTube or on whatever the, the social media is? And the pa pastor uh, almost groans, oh, yes, I have. Because uh, many of those preachers are not doing anything but tearing down Christians, tearing down other churches. And so study wisely. Use your time to study, not just the Word of God, we're going to talk about that in a moment, but study wisely. He asked for the book. Say, I want, to, I want to do some studying. I know we're out of school. I know you don't have school. And so it seems like, I say we're out of school. Uh, with a snow day, you're out of school. You're, you, don't know, no, you don't go into work, call off work or whatever. And so snow day, you think, well, uh, um, I can just uh, get by without reading a book. Well, take some time. Young people, read. Read something good. And uh, read, uh, thirdly, strive to read the Word of God. So we said, stay warm, study wisely, uh, uh, strive to read the Word of God. I believe that the parchments is the Word of God, is the, the law and the prophets. But especially, he said, bring the books, but especially the parchments. And we know that the parchments were written, uh, the Word of God was written on parchments. And so I uh, say, Pastor, can you say with 100% certainty that that's the Word of God? I can't say with 100% certainty, but I have a strong uh, opinion, a strong belief that that's talking about the Word of God, talking about the law and the prophets. And so he says, hey, especially bring the books, but especially bring the parchments. Yeah, I want to study wisely, but I really need to read the Word of God. And so I want to encourage you. Snow day, whether it's tomorrow or Tuesday or whatever day it is with this snow, it's a cold out there and, and winter is here. The Apostle Paul said, winter's coming and I need my, my cloak and I need the books and I need my parchments, especially the parchments. I want to encourage you, don't use this time to get away from God's word. Use this time to get into God's word. You have extra time. And it seems, for whatever reason, that when, at least for me and my family, uh, and I'll just tell on us, it seems that when you're out of routine, then uh, you, you go away. Our, we have family devotions in the morning, and so uh, when there's school and we're in a routine, uh, we rarely ever miss devotions. But then when 
something weird like this happens, uh, something strange, something out of the ordinary, you're not getting up at your normal time to go to work, you're not getting up at your normal time to get the kids ready for school, um, then we, that's the time we sleep in a little bit more and we say, well, we can read it, we're not doing anything uh, later on in the day, so I'll read it later on in the day and then we get busy doing things and, the, uh, uh, you know, kids play outside and there's 17 loads of laundry to wash because the kids are playing in the snow and uh, <laughs> parents, some parents are laughing because they know... Um, Stay in God's Word. Strive to read God's Word. Don't take this time to take advantage of getting away from God's Word. Say, normally I read my, my Bible at this time. Well, continue to read your Bible at that time. Normally I read this many chapters. Well, double that. I want to encourage you that during a snow day, read your Bible. Young people, stay warm. Study wisely. Strive to read the Word of God. One last thing, take your Bibles, turn over to Matthew chapter 24. Say, Pastor, why do you want us to study wisely? Why do you want us to study the Word of God? Why do you want us to strive to read the Word of God? What's so important about that? Why do you want us to stay away from sin? Matthew chapter 24, verse number 3, Jesus is on the Mount of Olives, and his disciples come to him privately, verse 3, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the signs of thy coming, and of the end of the world, the second coming, not the rapture? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. He said, First of all, let me tell you that there's going to be others that are going to come that are going to say they're me, and I want you to know that uh, before I come, there's going to be others that say that they're me, and and be, be wary of that. Watch out for that. And then he begins to tell all the different things that are going to be signs of the time. Verse 6, uh, ye shall hear uh, of wars and rumors of wars. Uh, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be uh, famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because, of, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, maybe I'm stretching a little bit talking about the coldness of the day. But I believe, first of all, let me say this, I believe that we are in the last days. I believe the Lord is coming soon. The rapture could take place at any time. I believe that with all my heart. In those days where the Lord's going to come, and again, that's talking about the second coming, because of iniquity, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I want to encourage you that Even though we're in the last days and winter's coming, let's make sure we keep our hearts and love for the Lord warm. We don't allow uh, the the distractions of the day to harden our heart towards the Lord. Say, how do you do that? Well, you stay in His Word, you be obedient to Him. And so, young people, I want to encourage you. If tomorrow is a snow day, which I think tomorrow, even for other schools, you'd be out of school anyway because tomorrow's President's Day, right? Man, snow day on President's Day... Except for, for the Hewitt's house, because you're homeschooled and you can still go to school, right? Um, the, uh, maybe you'll get another snow day this week, I don't know. But what do you do on a snow day? Well, stay warm, of course. Study wisely. Don't get off into uh, um, spending time on things that, that aren't going to be helpful, that are going to be useless, that are, that are going to hurt you. And then strive to read the Word of God. Stay in God's Word. Don't put your devotions aside because the schedule is different and things are odd. And so uh, I want to encourage you. We won't have an invitation uh, per se, but I do want to, I want to, do want to encourage you this. Um, we'll, we'll pray and Mrs. Moffat will come and play the piano just for a verse. But instead of asking for people to come forward to the, uh, for the invitation, I want to, I want to ask you to uh, uh, pray and determine that you're going to spend more time with the Lord during the snow days, during the, the winter, then away from God, then, uh, or, or that you would if you didn't have a snow day. And so that not that you would spend uh, less time with God, but you'd spend more time with God because you have the time. And so young people, let's see here. What's number one? 
Lydia, what's number one? No, you're not, a, you're not in children's church. Levi, what's number one? Do you remember? No? Tucker, you don't remember? Let's see here. Somebody remember? Uh, Michaela, stay warm. That's the easiest one. Stay warm. Number two, Caleb. Study wisely. Study wisely. And um, I know it's not infinity. I'm sorry. Say your name. Read your Bible every day. What's your name? Real loud. Savannah. I'm sorry, Savannah. I apologize. Savannah, I know it and I forgot it. I apologize. Savannah, very good. Read your Bible every day. Stay, uh, strive to be in the Word of God. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for the privilege it is to be in your house this morning. I know it's a little different um, service than it would normally be. I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to draw close to you. Lord, uh, we need preaching. We need to hear the Word of God preached, but we also need to have a personal walk with you and, and, uh, and to walk with you. And I pray that you'd help use the preaching that we've done this morning to help us have a personal walk with you, to walk closer to you. I pray that each one in here would determine this week, I'll spend more time in God's Word. I'll spend more time uh, studying your Word and, and not studying uh, something that doesn't, uh, is not useful. I pray you keep us all warm and in our homes and safe, Lord, I pray. And uh, we ask it all in Jesus' name for his sake. We pray it. Uh, remain in your seats for the invitation. Mrs. Uh, Moffat's going to play one verse of invitation. Determine to, to spend more time in God's word this week. one, even though we didn't have a regular invitation, we had one uh, uh, decision slip filled out. We have Linda Lynn coming to join us if, in membership to join us. I set this in here somewhere and you can't find it. Linda Lynn uh, comes by uh, transfer of letter. Uh, what in the world did I do with this thing? I had the, the, uh, the card right here. Well, you're just going to take my word for it. I'll have to find it and give it to the office. What did I do with this? Uh, I had to put it where my notes were. Okay. Uh, Linda Lynn comes from uh, uh, Halstead Independent Baptist Church in Halstead, Kansas, uh, by uh, transfer of letter. And uh, I don't know that any announcements have, have been made, so I won't say anything I shouldn't say, but I, I will say that I only uh, officiate or marry people who are members of our church. So I'm not making any announcements, but... Uh, Anyway, so, <laughs> uh, anyway, Linda Lynn is here coming to join the church, and we're thankful for that, and she has testimony of salvation and baptism, and uh, joined, uh, coming from an independent Baptist church, uh, moving her letter from an independent Baptist church in Kansas. All right, let's all stand. We'll be dismissed with a word of prayer, <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if I was supposed to say that or not. Um, that's fine. Okay. I, I, it's too late now. <laughs> um, don't forget the offering plates from the back. We intend to do offering and, and pass out bulletins. Of course, we have bulletins today, but uh, with the shorter service, we didn't. And so be faithful to your tithes and offerings. And uh, uh, on the way out, uh, as, you, um, as you exit, make sure you be faithful to your tithes and offerings. All right, uh, Brother Dover.